Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're here at the start of a galactic grand strategy. Well, the game is a grand strategy. It's Stellaris, as you can probably tell from this screen from Paradox Development. And I bought this game originally back in November 2018, uh, along with the Utopia expansion pack and played it solidly for about five or six months and it really was the game I spent most of my nights into early mornings sort of struggling through and trying to get to grips and trying to get on to the next event and so on and it really did take hold of my imagination at that time. Then some point during 2019 they released an update to the game which changed dramatically the whole economy of the system that the whole way planets worked and so on changed significantly um, and unfortunately that redesign of that that essential core game system meant that my old save games were unplayable with the new update at least anyway I could have kept it on the old one but then I was be missing out on features and stuff so as I had a lot of other stuff going on at the time, the YouTube channel was, was cracking along and I was playing several other games as well, I put Stellaris to one side and left it there. So it has been a good long while since I last played this game. However, those extraordinarily lovely people at Paradox offered a number of content creators a free key to their latest expansion pack, Federations. I thought, shall I pick one up, shall I not? Because if I pick it up, then I'm kind of obliged, in a sense, to produce some content for you uh, on YouTube as a thank you to the developers, obviously, for giving me free access to that uh, expansion pack. And I thought, you know what? I haven't played a game like this on the channel at all. I did try it once with Civilization, but because of the way I play, it didn't really work terribly well. And I'm, I'm afraid that's what might happen with Stellaris because it is a long term, it, is, it stretches out into the far distance, there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm no expert at grand strategy to be honest. I like to play things relatively simple as, as you may have seen if you're familiar with the channel. Uh, I like games with lots of things going on but once they get too, complex, too complicated and involved then I start to struggle, particularly in the early game and especially when I'm trying to create content on YouTube because I'm trying to think and process and see what the screen is telling me and it just becomes a big giant mess and it goes nowhere and it's not fun for anybody but I'm hoping that we can get somewhere with this game. We're going to see, we're going to give this game a crack on Ajax Post Plays, my little YouTube channel here, obviously, because you're watching it. Uh, now, since the uh, Federations came out, uh, I also went back to the store and thought, are there any other uh, expansion packs and DLC that I've not added to the game which would spice it up and give extra sort of flavour to this playthrough? So I've also picked up... In fact, what I'll do is I'll read through the list of the expansion packs and stuff that we've got in this game. So we started off, as I said, with Utopia. I've since added Distant Stars and Levias Leviathan's Story Packs, which I think gives a whole new sort of set of storylines within the game. Because it's not just strategy. It's not just 4X. Stellaris really is a kind of almost an RPG. It, it brings you in and makes you a character, a real character within this moving universe that responds to you in all sorts of um, sort of realistic ways. Uh, also, as I said, the Apocalypse, uh, which adds all sorts of new funky stuff, particularly militarily and dramatic events, and also Federations, which adds, in particular, as you may have seen, because you've, I'm a little bit, I'm a, I'm a few weeks behind people creating content for Stellaris Federations, so uh, you may well have seen this already, it adds a whole new origin feature to the game. and We'll go through that in just a moment. So there we are. Um, I hope this works. I'm looking forward to playing Stellaris again. It was quite fun. I'm not going to go into any real great detail. I'm by no means an expert. There are no mods in this game. So I thought that would just confuse things and, and it would complicate um, your understanding of what I'm doing. So what we're playing is just the base game with those few expansion packs. Uh, I'll detail all this in the description below in case you've missed it and don't want to go back. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on. Now, what I've done to save some time, I've created my own species. 
uh, based on one of these built-in ones down here. I'm not going to worry about which one because that's not relevant, not relevant because I've changed it significantly. So let's edit this and just go through the characteristics I gave these people. They are reptilian, these guys here, because it actually reminds me of a kind of Doctor Who monster. Is monster the right word? A species within uh, Doctor Who. A kind of Silurian kind of thing. Uh, with a mil militaristic bent, as we shall see. Uh, so I could change all that if I wanted. I could change the the look of the of the person of the persons we are, the species, the planet we live on. Uh, we'll come to that in a moment. Uh, I've called the uh, the species Ajax because <laughs> I'm very much egocentric. Uh, and we are Ajaxians, and our adjective is whatever that is. Ajaxi, we are Ajaxi. Uh, now our reptilian uh, name lists, uh, this, this is whatever, yeah, this is just a list of things we call stuff. I could edit this if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I've just given my ships a prefix of AX, short for Ajax, obviously really. Um, and the traits for our species. Now, this is really where you start getting into the whole RPG thing. Who are you? What what are your people about? What are their desires and goals, ambitions and fears? So this is what we are. So the ones we have picked, natural engineers. Uh, so they have a natural inclination towards engineering and material science. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to make things a bit easier for myself because engineering and materials are key to the development of of your space empire so having a, a sort of bonus in that area is quite nice talented uh they're born with a natural aptitude for stuff <laughs> so my leader level cap is plus one which means that my leaders my key figures in my society will be will potentially be a little bit better than they might otherwise be so they can develop and learn skills and keep on growing for longer uh, rather than sort of learning up to, say, uh, a secondary school or high school level, they can continue learning to university degree or master's or PhD level or whatever, in that kind of sense, I suppose. Uh, they are also quick learners, so my leaders gain experience 25% faster. So again, hopefully that will give me a boost in things like surveying planets, like uh, unearthing new anomalies and objects, and also in terms of science and the like, that I will learn stuff that much faster and gain experience from those discoveries that bit faster. Now, we need at least one negative in this, and the one we have selected is sedentary, which is kind of true for me, to be honest. I live a fairly sedentary life. Uh, the species has a sedentary past, as it says here in our description, uh, over here on the left. Um, the number its members are reluctant to migrate away from where they grew up so we love home which is which is good in a sense so our population growth from immigration so I get that's immigration people coming in to live in, in our world is down 15 percent and our resettlement cost if we want to move people out to other planets or other systems that will cost 25 percent more that's quite substantial as the empire goes. Uh, we'll see how how that works because population growth is quite a key thing in uh, in Stellaris. Uh, so our home world, I've called it Ajax. Uh, it's an arid world. It's a dry world, as you can see here. Uh, do these well, yeah, it's, uh, oh, you can get all these different vegetation is otherwise scarce. Uh, a small hydrosphere. I'll, I'll leave it like that. Simple arid world with the dry climate. Our star name is Origin. And we'll come to that uh, in a moment. <laughs> uh, our basic look and feel of our cities, reptilian, whatever, that's, that's fine. Doesn't make a great deal of difference to me. Now, this is the great new thing that's come with the Federation's expansion pack. So this is where you can decide... You, you can create a history, a backstory for your species, which can then be used to drive their story forward, how they see the universe and how they move out into it and what they do in response to the events that occur and the other species and people they meet. So we have got things like prosperous unification. 
So a stable unification has allowed this civilization to prosper and grow. So basically it's a very old and unified species which is sort of developed and grown uh, with an additional extra four population and a, an additional two districts. So basically bigger planets, more people on them, which can be a good thing. A mechanist. Uh, so this civilization has long been preoccupied with the idea of metallic automatons since the early steam age. Although they may, although many said it could not be done, the first true robots left the assembly lines long before space flight was even achieved. So we start with eight population, uh, start with eight of the population rather being robots and with a technology and infrastructure to build more. And upkeep of robots is 5% cheaper. Um, uh, these are some of the requirements in terms of traits and ethics and stuff like that, which we'll come on to in a moment. Syn syncretic evolution. Second species forms an integral part of this civilization. They are big, strong, and most of them have the intelligence of a particularly dim-witted child. Ancient wars have culled their species of the most aggressive tendency, leaving them quite servile. So, yeah, this is, this is kind of the old story of the enfeebled master race and the big powerful workers underground doing all the, the grunt work as it were to, to maintain the civilization could lead to all sorts of problems going forward uh, life there's all sorts of these i'm not going to go through them all uh, they're all fascinating stories which again build into how you see your species yourself your story and how it drives it forward now the one i've chosen which I think is rather nice. Galactic Doorstep is quite cool. Uh, has a dormant gateway in their home system, which is a potentially a technological benefit or a looming menace. So either the other side of the gateway is some wondrous science, some wondrous thing which will build your civilization and make it prosper and fabulous, or it could lead to something like Doomsday. Yeah. So, yeah, could be one or the other. It's the risk you take. But there you are. Uh, and the, but the one I've chosen is On the Shoulders of Giants. Because I just love the history that comes in the game. The anomaly is the search for meaning and life. So, the story of the Ajax Mandate, my species. Due to some unknown past, this civilization has hidden boons in their solar system. Placed there by a mysterious benefactor. And we start in the game with an archaeological site related to a mysterious benefactor in the home system. Uh, and it does mean we can't have the Gestalt consciousness. Now, the Gestalt, I think, is like a hive mind. It's like, like in Star Trek terms, the Borg. Everyone kind of thinks together as one. I think that's what it means. Um, yeah, we'll see that, in fact, in, this, in a second. So that's what we're going with on the shoulders of giants. Now, this is where you can define how your species reacts to events and, and how they develop and so on. There are two key things here. Uh, well, three, in fact. <laughs> I can't even count. Ethics, authority and civics. Our ethics are these orange circled items here. I've gone for the moderate ones rather than the fanatics. So we are militarist. So when called to battle, we will actually fight to to the end basically we can use the no retreat war doctrine which makes it easier easier for us to claim influence over systems that we come into conflict with and our ship file rate is higher uh is there any the only true virtues are courage and discipline and channeled properly they can overcome any obstacle okay uh egalitarian is the other one here uh, we cannot use the autocratic government, uh, but we do have the option for utopian living standards. Now, the faction, uh, the issue here, again, like any civilization, you can have factions within it, tribes within it, cults within it, uh, and they can vie for control and influence within the society. So for the faction influence gain, 25%, I think that might mean, I haven't played it for a while, as I've said, that I have an ability to influence factions uh, more easily in that sense and my specialist pop resource output is plus five so when we specialize people for uh, agrarian for growing food for mineralists and so on for mining and creating hard products alloys uh, hopefully we will have 
a plus five uh, output on that. And finally, materialist. Uh, it means we can keep robots uh, for cheaper, 10% uh, upkeep uh, modifier. So it's a, a decrease in cost of 10%. And our research speed is plus 5%. So uh, we can use academic privilege as a living standard, but we cannot use, we cannot outlaw the AI, and we cannot use uh, the outlaw of robotic workers uh, policies. So that's quite good. Uh, our authority, we're going to go democratic. And in fact, I don't think we can use oligarch on this, can we? Uh, oh no, we can't use autocrat. Yeah, so these are indeed all hidden away from us. We can choose democratic or oligarch. Um, so either a small group of people or a democratic one. Uh, so that's 10 year elections as opposed to 20. So I'm going to go with democratic um, because, well, because I'm a democrat basically. And our civics, which influence uh, the way our society develops, uh, meritocratic uh, so that gives us, again, a, a boost to our level, our leader level cap. Uh, and our specialist pop resource output, again, a growth of that in 10%. I'm kind of trying to weigh the scales in, in my, in my, <laughs> to my advantage, uh, as you can clearly see from this. And why not? Diplomatic Corps. Uh, this, again, gives us um, a better chance of a positive response from contact with other people, hopefully. Uh, so we've got more envoys and our diplomat di diplomacy has greater weight. And that will be important in one of the other features that's come with federations, which is the Galactic Council. Uh, I'm not sure how long it will take us to get there, but that will help us define the future of the galaxy uh, and our influence within that. It's like having a, a voice at the EU or the UN, for example. Uh, so, and there are, again, a couple of uh, requirements. We can't have fanatic purifiers and we don't have inward perfection as a possible civic. So that, that's fine. So that's good for me. Uh, this is just the name. So we are the Ajax Mandate. Uh, actually, I'll change that to um, adjective. No, we'll just call it Ajax. That's fine. Uh, uh, Ajaxist, perhaps. An adjective. If I, if I'm, my grammar is uh, well. It's a long time since I learned grammar, so I think adjective is that's right. Uh, a badge. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm happy with that. That was the default that came up. Our ship appearance, reptilian, and our ruler. Uh, he's going to be male. His name is going to be Zoblagit, Zoblagis, Zoblaglis, Zoblagis. I'm going to get that wrong constantly, aren't I? But hopefully I won't need to refer to him terribly often. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, so we will save that. Yeah, I'll replace the existing one we've already created. That's good. Uh, we've saved you. And let's crack on into the game. So, some basic settings. Uh, I've tried again to set these to be relatively straightforward and easy enough for me to get uh, into the game. Now, as I said, I'm not that familiar with it. It's a long time since I played it. So we're going to go for a medium-sized galaxy. Uh, we're going to go spiral. Um, I think that gives us a better chance of having room to develop before coming across other, uh, other empires. We shall see. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. There is a, a huge wiki attached to Stellaris. And in fact, I have a feeling... Um, I'm not sure we can get to it here, but actually within the game there is a link to the wiki which describes what all these do. So I'm taking off advanced AI starts, so I don't want any really powerful um, empires in the galaxy to get off the ground before I do. Fallen empires, they're very powerful um, species, but they don't develop particularly until you come into contact with them and then, then they'll impact on you and have an effect. Uh, on, on what you can do within the galaxy. Marauders, basically very powerful pirates. Uh, I'm going to turn those off because they can be um, a distraction. Tradition costs, I've, I've moved that down a little bit so it's a little bit cheaper to research and earn achievements. We'll come to that as we go through the game. Habitable, habitable worlds, uh, I've bumped that up just a little bit. 
so we've got more chance of finding places we can live. Primitive civilizations, they're not full empires, they're just other species you come across which you can sort of adopt into your own empire peacefully. Uh, the crisis strength, again, that's, that's a little less than full strength, um, but I'm okay with that. In fact, it tells me here, yeah, the higher the, the multiplier, the more dangerous the end game crisis will be. Um, and then a couple of start years for when things start getting really messy. Victory at difficulty. Ensign is the level where everyone is equal. So I have no particular advantages and the AI has no particular advantages. I'm going to see if I can just bump this up a little bit to Captain, which means that the AI empires do have advantages in terms of research, technology, that's all sorts of stuff. Um, but I'm going to turn on scaling difficulty, which as it says here, is that the AI will not start with those advantages, but they will gradually scale up to those over time. Uh, so it gives me a chance, as it were, to get my empire off the ground and up and running before I come into contact with really dangerous people in space. AI aggressiveness is going to be normal. The placement is going to be normal. I don't want advanced neighbours, um, so I just want room to grow first. Again, I'm trying to make life relatively easy for myself. High plane density, gateways, wormhole pairs, whatever, that's fine. It's nice to have two habitable worlds. Um, so I've got two places I can start on. It does mean that I'm going to be prompted to create a colony fairly early in the game, regardless. Um, which I may not be ready to do. I may want to have other things to do first, but we'll get on with that. Caravaneers, they're space traders. Uh, they're, they're not aggressive, they're not pirates, they're just traders. They can be useful. Iron Man mode means I can save and restart as and when I wish to, just in case things go horribly wrong. And that means I don't get achievements. Yeah, what the heck, I never play for achievements. Okay, we're 20 minutes into this recording. Let's actually get into the game. So here we are, the Ajax Mandate. We're a military commissariat. And ours is a history of oddities and inconsistencies. We've found ancient city ruins older than some archaeological excavations of primitive villages. We have unearthed saws, axes, and even rifles, which predate, far predate, stone-tipped spears and bows. Weird. A peculiar history did not, however, prevent us from stepping readily into a futuristic era of spaceflight. We have now managed to escape the gravity of our home planet aiming for other planets and bodies in our solar system and beyond. We had scarcely, le scarcely left the atmosphere before the oddities emerged anew. Strange signals of alien origin coming from within our own solar system. Let's go. Welcome, Commissary General. I am Veer. A prototype synthetic intelligence I have left on the tutorial the full tutorial for the moment because there are several things that I still forget to do and he's very helpful in reminding me to get things done that need to be that I need to pay attention to so first off uh, yeah we'll, t we'll ask him to tell me everything I'll turn him off as we go through you will have my yep that's, that's fine can be okay we know a situation log which is F2. The situation log displays a list of all currently available special projects. So this is where I get a list of all the things that are happening in my space that I'm aware that I can be aware of. So food growth is one thing that I need to do. Now if I do this, I think I get a bonus of unity, which means I can grow my empire more and also means people are happier with me. So I need a uh, this was my election promise. I need at least 15, 15, a 15 a month surplus in food. Now at the moment, you can see here, my food surplus is only seven. So that means I need to grow more food somehow. Uh, and I get a reward. Uh, if I can do that, uh, no, I get a reward of six month worth of unity. So to, uh, unity is again something that I can uh, get per month. In fact, where is that? Where's Unity? What's the symbol for that? I'm currently getting 13. Is that 13 a day? Or 30? I think it's 13 a month. So I'll get uh, six, month worth, six months worth of that if I manage to achieve that. So uh, first off, I need to survey. 
uh, a neighbouring system. So we get we get rid of that. Okay, now I have ships here, and I have a con oh, that's a mining station. Ah, uh, here's my sh is that no? These are my ships, the ones with black. So that's my. Fleet. Military fleets are used to protect our emerging empire from threats, or to expand our glorious rule through force of arms, if we so wish. So, yep, so there I am. That's my fleet. It's only a small fleet at the moment of three corvettes, and I can use those to, uh, to basically expand by dint of power, basically. <laughs> if people don't like me, then I can send the fleet in and deal with them. Uh, this is my construction this fleet. Is construction ship. Which is used to construct space. And I can use that to create all sorts of things, like new space stations to expand the empire or build mining facilities around certain resources. Now, here I am getting five energy. You can see it's green. Uh, sorry, it's, the number is green there with the flash symbol. Minerals, I'm collecting five there every month, I think, or whatever the period is. Now, this one here is engineering research. I could get two from there, but I don't have a mining station yet. Uh, if I right click on that, if I right click on something, no, I need the construction ship. And I can then, no, I'm not doing that, okay. <laughs> oh, the other thing here is I still haven't quite got used to how the camera works, so my apologies if I spend time flaffing, ar faffing around here and getting it wrong. Uh, okay, 12 there is trade. Uh, we're going let's see some minerals. That's okay, I think. But as the guy, as Via suggested, let's get a survey out. So we need to go to our galaxy screen. So here's our empire. That's the extent of our current system. And these are the stars we can get to at the moment. So let's go out. Uh, let's go out this way. Why not? Our science ship is here. This is our science ship, which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets. Now, this is allow this allows us to survey space, uh, other star systems, and also do scientific research, excavations, and that sort of stuff. For the moment, I want him out there. Now, this guy has an archaeology, an understanding of archaeology, so that's his speciality. But so before I want to send him him out or her for that matter, I'm not quite sure. Oh, she's female, fair enough. There are only two genders, I think, in this game, which is kind but of unusual, isn't it? Is where we will be so here's our research screen. So these are our other scientists. Uh, what I'm just looking for here is see if any of these scientists have a uh, advantage, a specialism, which befits a, survey sh a scientific survey ship uh, as opposed to our current uh, captain. I think we've got that okay actually. If we send him out to survey that'll be fine. So let's uh, get rid of them for the second. Let's get our survey ship out and we're going to send you to this system here. So we click survey and let's send him out there. And he'll take his time. The game is still paused so once we get it started they'll, they'll crack on with that. So, physics research, uh, you've got a longer lifespan, so that doesn't help us too much in terms of uh, bonuses for research. So what can we get here? Um, probe deflectors, energy credits from technicians. Energy is always useful to have because everything needs power. The better we can extract and, and use, the more efficiently we can use energy, the better. So let's research that. Societal, societal, societal. God, I must get my teeth fixed. Get my teeth in. Um, society research uh, options are ground defence planning, ecos. Ah. Oh, unity. Right now, our promise on election was increasing the food output, and this one does seem spookily relevant and useful. So that gives us a 20% increase in food from our farmers and unlocks uh, an edict, a policy for farming subsidies. I think we should take that one. And our engineering research, coil gun, new strike aircraft or armor. Um, okay, 
And none of these I think are immediately useful to us. So I think probably the simplest thing to do is take the one which won't take us long. Uh, and the one which, the yeah, these two, the coil, the coil guns and the uh, Ceramo, Ceramo metal. Um, I imagine that's a mix of cer ceramics and metal. Uh, are both the same kind of length of uh, research needed. We'll take uh, that, so that improves the armour of our ships. So that is good. So let's get game going. This is our home world, oh. the capital of our empire. Sorry, I pressed, a, pressed a key Sunrise there, Spain, which took which me straight to my planet. Provide... <laughs> I'm going to ignore it for the moment. Let's get our speed going. Get out of so pause first. Vast distances that separate star systems. Okay, so... Wait, I, I'm not going to worry about hyperdrive because that's just where things travel. The important thing, though, is we have discovered a new archaeological site, which is this uh, notice here. The archaeology window shows details of the currently selected archaeology site. After and this is what Fear tells me all about it. So we need to ex examine this. We need to research it, and that might give us breakthroughs, it might give us new technologies, it might lead us on a whole event chain, a whole new story. In fact, it says there, Chapter 1. Now, I, uh, can I, am I, I'm doing this, am I? I th oh, I need to assign a scientist. Ah, okay. I only have one site, well, I have several scientists at the moment. The scientist I have, which is good at archaeology, is on my spaceship. My survey ship, isn't he? So I need to get him back to do that archaeology, because I think... Is that more important than the survey? I'm not sure. Can I recruit another leader? Uh, another specialist, another, another scientist. Where's the leaders? Uh, they're here somewhere. Oh, there they are. Right at the bottom. Hire, dismiss, and now to recruit more scientists, scientists another scientist, general. I need a uh, hundred, ooh, a hundred or two hundred energy. Uh, I've only got enough energy to recruit this scientist. This scientist, Zabok. Now he's particularly good at. He's, well, he's, he's cheaper to run, <laughs> but that's about it. Um, okay, what I'm going to do, I think... Uh, these, are the side, uh, these are the scientists I have got currently running. I think we need to move these people around, so... What I want to do, I think, can I do this here if I go into my ship? Of course, you can't drag these little windows into the middle of the screen, which is where I like to work on them. So can I replace you with... Um, actually, yeah, you're good, because you're researching new worlds. You, actually, it makes sense to have you out in space. Or can, uh, can I? Let's just look at that situation log again. No, I need a guy in a ship to do this. I need a guy in a ship. So what we will do, we'll send him off on his survey, I think. That's what we will do. And I will build another ship. Now to build another ship, I need to go to... Ooh, hang on, something's happened. But the Ajax mandate is... The, the, uh, oh dear, oh dear, I need to change that. Can I change that mid-game? <laughs> oh, it's embarrassing. Is a buzz with news of alien remnants that were recently studied. These leavings are considered definitive proof of intelligent, purposeful alien activity. At some point in the past, we may still be alone now, but we are at least not the first to be so. Okay, I'm not sure what that means in terms of things we can do. Nothing much. Okay. Uh, let's just think. Oh, a new ship. That's what I was thinking of. So where's my starbase? There it is. This is our system starbase. These upgradable stations. Mark yep. We'll discover more about them as we go through. Uh, now I do have a shipyard here, and I can build a new science ship. 
That takes 100 alloy, which is what I've got here. I think that's important, actually. Yes, that is important. We need an extra science ship. So I will build that. So my alloy count has gone down dramatically. And it will take, take time to rebuild. But that is what I want to do. Uh, the other, one other little thing I love about this game is it just looks gorgeous. I mean, look at that. Is that not fabulous? If I can get it in the right position on the screen. There you go, that'll do. And I think I can hide the HUD here. Is it? It is that. Isn't that a beautiful screenshot? That is. <laughs> oh, no, I need to press that again to get rid of it. Okay. Right, so let's uh, crack on. Uh, where's our science ship? Has he left our system yet? Where is he? Oh, he's there already. Ah, now this is good. This is the Suyan system. And it looks like it only has three planets. So that shouldn't take too long. Yeah, it says down here he's only got three orders. In fact, he's, got, he's done one already. So what have we discovered? Abnormal conditions. As our science ship scans the surface of Suyan 3, it becomes quite clear that we have found something out of the ordinary. Its composition and history provides it with extra materials that we should take opportunity to gather. We will surely come across even more irregularities like this as we survey new planets and should not underestimate their impact on our expansion. Intriguing. Okay. Ah, minerals. Excellent. So we... Right. Now, we could send out a construction ship. I keep pressing the wrong button there. We could send out our construction ship to build a mining station around this, but we can't as yet because we don't own this system. We'll actually need to build a space station first so we can take ownership of this system and then we can build resource stations around our planets or objects like that. Uh, what's that's just flashing to say it's going to... Yep. Yeah. They just time out after these alerts time out after a while, that's all. So nothing found on that barren world. Barren world. Ah, oh, he's yeah. Ah, there are four objects to survey here. There's the three planets and the sun itself. So he will carry on researching that. Okay, so My two things have here. occurred. We have finished surveying the Suyan system. Which means we can now send in our construction ship if we wanted to, to build a space station around that, in that system, around the sun. Which means we can then exploit these resources. Um, and we've also got our new science ship, but no scientist to, to, uh, to, to run it. So, uh, if we, yeah, that's surveyed, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. So, our science ship is down here. Can we recruit a new leader? What scientists do we have option available to us? Oh, we still got the same bunch of people. Um, mm, I think what we will do is we will research. Actually, we, we will recruit you. We will put our... Uh, the scientist Cablox, who's currently our societal research specialist, will put him in the new science ship because he has this researching new worlds uh, specialism. So that makes him more appropriate for that. We'll put our new scientist, Cablox, um, uh, whatever he was called, yeah, Zabok, in as our society research chap. Now, can I do that? Have I remembered the how that works? So assign a leader. Yep, we'll put you in there. Okay, that's good. Uh, actually, oh, I say yes to that. That's fine. And then go into the research screen and assign Zabok, our new scientist, to that role. So that should now work. Yeah, we've got people in there. Uh, we've already done some research. That's fine. So we haven't lost whatever the previous guy was doing. So, our scientist here in the Axe Zolirics can go out and research these other systems. I'm going to research these out here, I think. 
So what we'll do, we'll send him off on survey, and if I hit the shift key, I can go there, then there, 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 and send him out on a route, so he'll do that automatically. So if nothing unusual happens, he'll just go and follow that route and do all the surveying that we need doing. Meanwhile, our existing surveyor here, uh, Axe Carox, needs to come back here uh, and go to our home system. Oh, of origin, there it is. Uh, we need him. Yeah, that's you. And we want you to survey uh, wherever this anomaly is. Is it telling me on? It's not. Don't think it's telling me on here. So I need to highlight it. Track on the map. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Right. So I need to send you uh, research anomaly. If I right click on that, no. Right click. Excavate site. There you go. So that's. He'll come back and do that. Good. Momentarily. The scientist has assumed command of our new science ship. Thank you. Now that we have begun exploring our right. neighboring stars, yep. so it might be time to extend our. Yep. Vera telling me we're doing very well, and I should start looking at getting my construction ship doing useful stuff. So let's Mining do that. Mining are used to extract the minerals and strategic resources. Yep. Good. I understand that. So let's send you out to. Ah, that's a mining. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, the symbols look the same, but I'm easily confused. So that's that's it. That's our construction ship. So we want you to build a star base there. Now that costs 63, uh, whatever that is, influence. The 75 alloys. Yeah, we've got enough of those now. So we'll do that. What that means, our empire grows. I keep pressing the wrong key there. Our empire grows into that system and we can then utilize and exploit those resources, which is a good thing. So how is everyone going? Where are our ships in all this? We should be seeing our science ship. Oh, you're there already. You're doing the research. Excellent. We can see that on the situation the log. To manually design new ships in the ship designer screen. Yeah, I can do new ships. Well, aha! <laughs> uh, no, that was just me pressing the button. I was just thinking lots of things happening at once, but they're not. So let's go back here. Uh, this is our excavation, and you can see there our progress. We've got 69 days left until our next discovery point, until something happens that we have to take a choice on. Uh, and we also have a tutorial prompt here to go into ship design, but we'll leave that for the next episode. I think this will do very nicely for the moment. We have started research. We have explored a brand new solar system, Surian, and we're about to create to expand our empire into that by building a star base. And we've unearthed some interesting archaeological ruins. As the Ajax Mandate starts its journey to Galactic Dominion. Possibly. Anyway, that's it for Stellaris Federations. Uh, or ho hopefully the first of a long series. If you enjoyed this, I will be doing more. If you don't, I might stop. But if you want to let me... If you if you want to encourage me to carry on, it'd be great to hear from you. You can do that in one of two ways. The first way is by uh, a like. That's always good to receive. Uh, they're always lovely. Even better though, if you've got any thoughts, any suggestions, any ideas, any criticisms of what I'm doing here, uh, uh, any guidance or tips would also be very handy, then do please leave a note in the, uh, in the comments box below. That would be lovely to hear from you. And of course, if you've not already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Stellaris Federations. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.